hey welcome back today i'm going to uh, explain you guys about uh, data flows data flows in power apps are mainly used for uh, transferring the data from an external system like sql excel some flat files and uh, any other source into data words table okay so remember always in data flows the destination should be a data words table and you can use any kind of uh, external storages to bring the data into uh, the data words environment okay so I will show you what are the out of box uh, templates that are already available for bringing up the data into a database table. Okay. So uh, to explain data flows, I am taking an example of doing a inner join. Okay. So I have a scenario like I have two tables. One is employee details table, which carries the, uh, the details of an employee like the first name, employee age, employee, uh, employee ID. And another table, uh, an employee card table, just the information of the employee ID and uh, what is the item that the employee purchased. And I'm, I'm maintaining this data in this table and the basic employee details in the other table. I, I have a requirement where I want to do an inner join between these two tables. I want to do a join between these two tables based on the uniqueness of the employee ID column. Okay, Based on employee ID column uniqueness, I will bring the uh, employee item data from this table into the first table and basically I want to keep the total result set into a separate new table okay so you may come across this kind of, you may come across uh, uh, this kind of requirements in any of your uh, projects okay whenever you want to match the data between in two different data data was tables or three different data was tables someone might ask you to do a merge so instead of doing some power automate writing some WordPress and all you can use data flows to achieve this in a simplest way Okay. I'll show you how to do that. So for this, what you need to do is, uh, I'm just closing, opening a new tab. I'm just opening a duplicate tab for Power Apps. So what you guys need to do is click the Data Flows option. Here, uh, click New Data Flow. Start from blank. I'm giving uh, Data Flow. Uh, this kind of pop-up can pop-up will come uh, frequently in uh, in any of your environment. Don't worry about that. Just click close and proceed. Inner join data for inner join. I'm giving the name like this. Okay. Click create. Now see these are the out of box available templates that are being provided by Microsoft for doing a transfer of files from transfer of data from an external environment. Like see, you can see there are so many templates like from excel you can pull data from flat file xml json sql mysql so data uh, sap data flows okay data was so currently i am doing inner join between two data was tables so my main goal is to play with data was tables so my source data source source is data was only okay so i have to select data was because i have to connect to the two tables right to do the join so for that i have to connect to data was then clicking data was selecting data was so here you can see the connection is already available generally for the very first time it will ask for you to create the connection so you have to create new connection and set up the connection to this dev environment and then the connection is available in this drop down you have to select the connection click next okay so now what you have to do is uh, now it is showing me all the uh, data was tables available in this environment open the node and to see okay so it might give this kind of error warning saying that can you configure the connection again just click the configure connection select the connection again and connect okay now we'll try to load all the data was tables in this environment okay so you have to select the two tables that i'm trying to do the match these two tables i have to select so i will do a search selecting details and card table and I'm clicking transform okay so I got my two tables into my data flow wizard now I'm going to perform the join I will show you how to do that so what you have to do is so in in our scenario these are the two tables okay employee details this is the first table and the second table is employee card table I'm going to do a merge between these two tables using employee ID okay so my first table is employee details so i have to come here select employee details okay once you select employee details uh, watch carefully here you have two options merge queries and append queries 
click merge queries it will give you this kind of window saying that see your first table is employee details what is your second right side table so second uh, the right side table is employee cart okay so here it will display the data from these two tables so now what you need to do is you need to select the unique column in both the tables so the unique column is employee id so scroll to the right mouse you will see the employee id here select the column and the header same way go to the second table it will be at the right mouse select the column okay so now you are set, trying to set up the inner join and you selected the unique column as employee id scroll down see here you have the different options of inner joins so we have different type of inner joins right left outer right outer full outer inner so here i want to do a simple inner join okay based on your requirement you can select left outer or right outer or full outer as well i am selecting inner join okay so by default it just it just tries to do some kind of match and it will show you how many row how many rows are matching okay so based on the employee id i selected it is telling there are three rows which are matching in both the tables okay okay that is fine click okay so now what's happening is the two tables are getting merged and it will show as a result set the final result set okay see so this is the final result set so you might wonder okay maybe you are seeing only employee details table where where is that column where are the columns coming from the second table okay don't worry scroll this to the right so here you are seeing the second table so the only catch is you have to click this icon the like the small headphones kind of icon click that you can select whatever columns that you want to be to make them part of this result final result okay so these are the columns from the second table i'm un i'm unselecting all i'm only selecting which are required for the result set which are the columns coming from the second table this employee cart id i will select and if you scroll down yeah the name i will select employee id select employee item i will select so these are the columns i want from the second table click okay okay so now you can see the columns the fridge phone book from the second table also came into a single view now you can see the data from both the tables in their single view uh, if you want i can show you see employ age 23 24 34 this is from first table it is coming in a single view for you okay now click next so this is the final data flow wizard uh, screen where this will give an option like how you want to send the data to a dataverse table okay here the options are like you can create a new table or you can send the data to an existing table or some cases some people want to try do some trial troubleshoot so they don't want to do any load they just want to play here and there with the result sets in that case they will just select do not load so that the data flow won't do anything at all okay so in my case i'm what i'm doing is i'm just selecting load to a new table okay here i'm just leaving the columns as is i'm just giving a column name name also i'm just leaving it as is so the final table name i'm giving it as employee final okay again this one i'm also employee final so nothing actually here it will map the columns automatically and it will send the data to a separate table okay you can always create your own table and you can select the option load to an existing table and you can map your own columns like if you want to send the employee age also to a particular column you can do the mapping here that that happens when you select the second radio button okay so um, what i'm doing i'm just creating a new table i'm not doing anything uh, complex here so that you guys will understand i'm clicking next okay so here two options refresh manually or refresh automatically refresh manually is like you have to go click the refresh button in the data flow so that it runs on demand refresh automatically is like you can set some schedule i will show you what is the refresh automatically thing i'm selecting refresh automatically see here you can give some date how many for how many uh, every 20 minutes you want it to run you can just give 20 minutes okay or you can whatever schedule based on your requirement you can do or you can run on a specific day or every friday you can run something like that okay uh, right now i'm just clicking publish publish means like the settings that you define for the data flow will be published and the data flow will run immediately when you click publish that happens every time okay remember 
there is an option for publish later also publish later will happen in the later point of time okay publish now it's immediate is clicking publish sorry is trying to select that i'll click refresh manually only i'll just explain you how to use refresh automatically and just clicking refresh manually publish okay so now you can see the publishing is in progress at the top it takes some time my environment is a little bit slow that should be fine i think it's coming up just generally the data flows or uh, the screen is a little bit slower okay so now you can see the publishing is in progress see these are the different options you can edit the refresh settings like uh, the refresh schedule you can edit here and you can see the uh, refresh history how it how the refresh is happening okay generally it is still doing publishing so it is not showing anything once it is published you can go in here and see uh, what is the how is the refresh happening and you can do an incremental refresh also so generally people don't want to do a full refresh every time so what are the changes that happened after the publish you you want to do the refresh for only those uh, changed uh, uh, delta so then you can use edit uh, incremental refresh create copies like you want to take make a copy of this data flow into a new data flow and you can rename the data flow and you can use it for a different purpose okay so still doing it Yeah, so it is published, and you you can see it's in green color. That means it is published successfully, and as you can see, it is running a refresh. I didn't do any refresh, but uh, that's a default design. Whenever you publish, it will do a refresh also for you immediately after the publish. Okay, after a successful publish, and now you can go here and see show refresh history. What exactly is happening? So currently. A refresh is happening. It will show you what is the refresh, how it is going, and all. You can click it and. Uh, see how many is like what exactly it is doing okay that's what it will do and so, sometimes it fails you can have the refresh failure history also you can click here and see what got failed and you can download the report and see what is the problem with the data flow. that also you can uh, look into it so maybe let's go back and see if the table is really being created the new table and employ Let's employ. Yeah, see the employee finance table got created from the data flow. Hope the data is getting pushed also. I think the refresh is also done. I think the data is there. See the data came. Okay. So if you if you want to see all the columns, you can select all the columns. Employee D, employee term. Uh, there is a name, and I think there is an age also, right? What is the age? I think during the image somehow it got wrongly selected, but I will show the columns which are being coming up. Okay, C employee ID came, employee final came, the employee ID came, the employee items came. Okay, the name also came up. So likewise, you can you can get the data into your final table. Okay, or you can create your own table and you can send the data as well after the inner join. Okay, so this is what I want to uh, show you guys. So data flows is a very helpful subject whenever uh, you don't want to create any complex workflows or complex power automate things for your uh, scenarios. You can go ahead and use data flows. That will be pretty much helpful because this is something available out of box. All the pagination, all like if if it has more than five thousand data, ten thousand data, like if the source is having, uh, if you have an SQL having ten thousand millions of records, don't worry, data flow is capable of looping through each and every record in SQL, get the data and put it in uh, database tables.
okay so just try to play around with data first you can have more and more learnings as well and the data flow wizard you can uh, do a inner journey and you can transform that uh, transform the data uh, as per your wish you can you can change the data type of the like uh, the columns and you can you can remove unwanted columns and you can have a single smaller smaller view and uh, pull the pull only those columns into dataverse table that also you can be done okay so whatever the wizard that i shown you earlier it is called power query window so power query window is mainly uh, comes under the concept of power bi but it uh, the smaller version of power bi is power query we are using in data flows okay. so once you start doing some kind of small pocs you get to understand more about this uh, that's all actually that's that's what i want to uh, show you today uh, thanks for your time thank you please subscribe to my channel and please like and share as well thanks for your support thank you